this method is not perfect. This is more like a workaround. So as many of you know, WhatsApp does not work on BlackBerry 10 devices, but you can get it to work on WhatsApp web on a BlackBerry 10 device. So in order to complete this tutorial, you will need, of course, a BlackBerry 10 device and WhatsApp running on another device so that way you can link it to WhatsApp web. You will also need to have Google Chrome installed on your BlackBerry 10 device. If you don't know how to sideload apps onto your BlackBerry 10 device, I will link a video above as well as in the description and even the comments so that way you know how to add the app and you're ready to start the tutorial. I hope that this tutorial will help those of you use your Blackberries as a daily driver or even as a weekend device. From your BlackBerry 10 device, you'll need to open Google Chrome. Now for this tutorial, I'll be using Google Chrome. I have not tested this on other web browsers, but it will not work on the default web browser found on your BlackBerry 10 device because it is too far out of date and the JavaScript no longer works. So I'm going to open my Google Chrome browser. And from Google Chrome, I'm simply going to search WhatsApp web in order to log into WhatsApp web. From the search results, I'm going to open WhatsApp web. Now, once you're brought to this page, you'll need to change your browser settings in order to access WhatsApp web. To do this, go to the top right-hand corner and select the browser settings, pictured as three dots. From this menu, you'll need to scroll down and be sure to check the box desktop site. Once you do this, the page will load and it may take a few moments or even a few minutes in some cases to be able to see the QR code in order to scan and link your WhatsApp devices. Be patient, it can take a bit. Now, once your QR code has loaded, you'll need to link to your current WhatsApp device. For example, I'm using my Google Pixel 8. So to do this, I'm going to go into my WhatsApp settings and you can select the three dots again in the top right hand corner and choose link devices. From this menu, choose link a device. And you can go over that current QR code in your browser and it should log you in. Again, this may take a few minutes. It's very slow, but be patient and you'll log into WhatsApp web. And now you can see I'm logged into WhatsApp web. You can see that it's a bit difficult to see, especially if you're visually impaired like myself, but you can zoom in to the interface by simply spreading your fingers and kind of scrolling around. To make it more visible, I usually change it to dark mode. So to do this, you can go to the settings menu on the left hand side. From the settings menu, you can scroll down and choose chats. From chats, I'm going to choose theme. And from the interface again, you'll have to scroll around to get to some menus. From here, I'm going to choose dark and then scroll over and choose OK. So now this makes it a lot easier to see. And I'm going to go back to my chats and I'll show you that it does work to chat, but there are some exceptions. So from my chats, I'm going to go down and chat with myself. Once you open a chat, you will have to swipe over to the right hand side because this is how the WhatsApp web app interface is shown. As you can see here, you can receive photos and see photos, but you cannot send photos. At least in my case, I've tried to send photos multiple times and they always fail. Another thing you cannot do is send a voice memo. I also tried doing this and it never arrived as well but you can send and reply to messages and receive messages. To do this, you can select the field below, and of course you can start typing your message. 
to send the message, select enter in the bottom right hand corner. And the message should be sent. If I go and check my Google Pixel device, I can see as well that I have the message I just sent. So this is a good workaround if you really need to have WhatsApp messages to talk to people, but there is a lot of features that do not work on WhatsApp web. For example, you cannot call or video call on WhatsApp web, so you're quite limited in that capacity. So I generally just use this as a workaround to kind of communicate as a text message. Now, another thing that does not work is the notifications. So if somebody is sending you a message, you'll have to manually check your WhatsApp if you want to see if you've received any messages. Honestly, as a digital minimalist device, it works quite well. I'm somebody who doesn't use WhatsApp all that often, except to send some messages here or there. And if I'm making video or phone calls, I'll use my other devices at home. If you're having some trouble logging into WhatsApp web or even accessing the page itself, I would recommend clearing the history of your Google Chrome browser and clearing the cache in particular. This could block you from accessing WhatsApp web. You may have other errors that may appear when trying to log into WhatsApp web. Some of those errors will say that you need to verify your connection. And for me, this happened when I had very poor internet connection, either through my data service or through my Wi-Fi itself. To remedy this, I just used another device as a hotspot and I was able to log into WhatsApp web with no issue. Now I recommend saving this as a bookmark so that way you can easily access the page. You may notice that you are logged out after a few days and you may need to repeat this process in order to access WhatsApp web. Now I hope this tutorial helped those of you out who want to use your BlackBerry device either as a daily driver or when you can, but still be able to access services such as WhatsApp. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.